What's going on, guys? Hey. hey. Uh, what are What are we doing? What are we doing, Evan? We're doing a podcast, bro. We are We're doing, doing the first annual AGAG TV podcast. Uh, I don't know about annual, but uh, so guys, I wanted to try something different. I wanted to try something new. This could go either really bad or really good. Eh, it could also be mediocre. Who knows? But um, yeah, I just uh, you know, music is great. Uh, music videos are great. Uh, travel videos are great, whatever. Uh, but I just wanted to, you know, try something new. Uh, I don't know how many people are going to enjoy this. Uh, cultural difference, language we difference, are. cultural barriers, whatever. Uh, but me and Evan uh, like to uh, just chill and talk and just discuss uh, and just enjoy each other's uh, company, I guess you could say, yep. uh, with each other uh, from time to time. And uh, we thought we, we, we'd record this um, for you guys, uh, so you guys uh, kind of let you guys into our thought thought process, into our mindset. An uh, unscripted, basically, discussion of just what's going on and what's yeah, happening. This is, all, this is all from our minds. There's uh, nothing planned. This was kind of like, I was like, you know what, why not? We'll, we'll, just, uh, we'll just record this, see how it goes. And um, he texted me and was like, "Hey, you want to do a podcast?" And I was like, uh, "I don't know." But yeah, we were both a little bit nervous because it's our first time doing it. I don't like. This is probably a complete different. Excuse me. Uh, this is probably like not the type of podcast you guys are used to. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty ghetto. It's uh, it's literally two dudes out in the cave that you're used to when a, I'm in the video. In the garage. It's in the garage. I'm in the cave. We're in the cave doing a podcast. It is a fun. cold garage, so if you guys see me shivering, excuse that. <laughs> but um, it I is have, currently cold here. I upgraded my mic. Hopefully it sounds good. Uh, but, uh, yeah. It. So we'll just, you know, talk about what's uh, in our lives or current situations in, in our world and the Earth's world. and um, Let us know if you like it. Yeah, that would be interesting to know. And if you do, what you want to hear, what we talk about. If there's any current, current yeah, events you... or any type of music or any type of topic that you feel is uh, relative to what where you're at and where we're at and if you want to hear us talk about it, maybe we'll talk about it later. Yeah, if you guys definitely enjoy this, uh, definitely give us your feedback. We'd appreciate that. Like, honestly, if you guys don't like it, just just let us know. But kindly, please, don't, don't give a shit. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so uh, I guess we'll go ahead and start. Uh, yeah, do it, I don't know, man. How's life, bro? How's, uh, how's work? You know, 2020 so, was... So what do you do for work? I work so in this the will be kind of like an introduction to our lives. I work in the HVAC industry. What is eating, the HVAC? I don't eating know. Eating, ventilation, and air conditioning industry. So I you, provide air for people in commercial buildings, like in an office space. If you're uh -huh. too cold, you're too hot. It's uh, it, We provide what they call comfort for people in office buildings. But also if... Hot, you, air, hot air in the winter months, cold, cold air in the summer months... But and you also do like it in a, in a smart way, in an efficient way, right? Yeah, so that's the, that's the other side of the company. But I, I do the installs. I install the ductwork and all the equipment. You do the physical stuff rather than kind of like the office. The technological work, yeah. I do the, 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 labor, the labor work, putting in yeah. the equipment. So with like, like COVID, that. like how is your... Uh, obviously, in, in the U.S., there's been a lot of people who have been, unfortunately... Uh, just laid off, mm -hmm. probably fired. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, just, just not a great season in the past. In, in recent times, it's just not been a great, mm -hmm. uh, a great time for, for for many many people. Yeah. Uh, but for you personally, how are you? Uh, how are you coping with it regarding your job? Maybe even family and stuff. Well, personally, <clears throat> excuse me. Personally, nothing's really changed much. Yeah. Like I don't, I haven't, I haven't missed a day of work. I don't. I, mean, I didn't get laid off. Like unfortunately, a, a, a lot of people did. Um, I'm still working every day, Monday through Friday. 
you know, that kind of thing. I think just for the industry in, in general, I work in the commercial industry. I don't work in the residential mm -hmm. industry, like doing homes and things like that. And uh, a lot of people who work in office spaces and stuff like that, they work from home now. Yes, absolutely. And I think that just in the realm of what I do, it there's going to be a lot of turnover because you got people working in office spaces who... Then COVID hits. Yeah. They go, well, we all can't work in our office spaces anymore, so we're going to send everybody home and they're work with their laptops and their gear or whatever they have. And we're going to make them work from home. I think a lot of companies, especially in the industry we're in, we're in you know, Washington, Seattle, which is a very tech-heavy mm -hmm. uh, industry, right? Microsoft, are... Amazon, T-Mobile, all of those places, right? They're sending people home. They're working from home, and then and they're going, well, dang. We can get all these people working from home, and we don't have to rent out big high rises and all this office space for people to work in. We can save money industrially by not, you know, having a rent at this big building, and we can just pay people to work from home. It, so that affects me and my and I, and my industry because we majorly work on buildings like that where there's a bunch of people working in an office and, we, and we're providing that that's that air that comfort for them and it's funny you say that because it took a, a, a serious illness or a serious disease to a figure pandemic. out that a, it took a, a pandemic for these corporate uh companies and these large you know big even small companies sure. to realize that Majority of jobs can be done from home. Yep. And then that's just kind of, uh, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. There's always, th there's always the jobs that need to be in the office. There's always, you know, like a, a few people and sure, stuff like that absolutely. that need to be taken care of. But if you're compared company, to the people who don't need to be, if you're a company of a hundred people and you realize 60 of them can work from home, that decreases your industrial space by. 60% if you know if we're just talking that way then your rent decreases and you have more money to do something elsewhere but I mean to go on your question like that has happened and, and I feel like we've seen a decrease in that kind of industrial workspace but we're still working at least you know I, I don't feel like the industrial real estate market if you were is going away. I mean, people oh, really? are still no. going to need bits. People are still going to need buildings, and buildings Real are still going to get built, and people are still going to rent forever. and do all that stuff. It just you you definitely can see what the trend is. Yeah. But with with the pandemic and what's been going on. Yeah. But uh, real estate, uh, property, anything of that sort, <clears throat> uh, that's always going to be popular a hot topic a hot subject regardless of a pandemic regardless of anything because that's that's uh an asset to to people to companies since the beginning of times so i feel like that's um one of the most um the wisest i feel like investment you can make is to um to purchase or to invest into a property or mm -hmm. some sort of office space to uh, invest into i don't know um but uh, okay, so we got that out of the way. Uh, we got vaccines have been yeah, they're brand hot, new. hot on the hot topic, hot on the subject. Oh yeah, uh, hot off the press, baby. What do you? So we've obviously <clears throat> people are different. People have different thoughts. We, but uh, it appears we only have two. We have two. Uh, sides of the Opposing vaccines. opinions. Two, basically, two two opinions. Uh, for some reason, there isn't like three or four different opinions about the vaccine. It's always like, yeah, I'll get the vaccine because, you know, uh, I don't want to get sick. I, mm. You know, I trust these scientists. And then you have on the other side, like, no, these guys are more, more so conspiracy theorists who are like, no, these guys want to inject me with some government control poison or whatever <laughs> that might be a little bit extreme but they don't they don't trust it <laughs> yeah. for whatever for whatever reason so sure. it's like either trust it or you don't yeah and like 
uh, I want to trust it because I'm tired of this and like uh-huh. I want the world to I don't know if it'll become as normal as it will be two years from two as years ago was, yeah but I, I want it to become as normal to go back to normal as much as possible yep so uh, you know uh, I, I like traveling and I, I, I like doing that you know going away from home mm-hmm. and um, even before COVID uh, certain vaccines were required yep sure were and I feel like soon probably at the end of this year it'll probably be a requirement for you to have a COVID vaccine to uh, go away from the country to to fly away from the country go to somewhere else and I personally okay that's just a personal opinion that's just a personal belief no I I, you think that I really do sure obviously everything is personal but I feel like I'm getting this based on previous uh not experiences, but scenarios. Okay. Like, I don't know. Uh, th- like I said, there's uh, certain vaccines you need to get before, mm-hmm. you, before you can enter a new country. Okay. And I feel like they're going to add COVID to that list. Like, you need to have a COVID-19 vaccine before you can enter a country. Okay. Uh, regardless, whatever you believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't believe it, you're not going get, to get into the country that have those requirements so I don't know why you would even try to do that but uh, it's I just think I, I it's just a, a opinion that I think uh, a vaccine for COVID will be required for sure. traveling abroad okay for many countries not all but I feel like uh, a lot of countries will require that okay and I personally don't mind getting a vaccine okay uh, people talk about a lot uh, in regards to you know, I don't. I don't know what's inside. Uh, you know, I don't want to be a guinea pig. It's like, before the vaccine can even be public mm-hmm. to the majority of citizens, because mm-hmm. uh, first you have uh, testing. You mm-hmm. have there's like lots of phases in, oh, yeah. in the vaccine. Mm-hmm. There's one, two, three phases, and then the fourth phase is the public rollout. Yep. So like, everyone can get it. We're not even at four. Uh, I think maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, and well, so, there's a public vaccine right now. I don't know if it's. I feel a like rollout it, or not, but there it's people not are like, getting vaccinated, and there are, in but America. it's only under certain circumstances. If you're a, a healthcare teacher, worker, someone of a teacher, they're they're doing high risk, so people so high people risk. can get back into schools and stuff. Teachers, healthcare workers elderly people right okay but like me and you it's very hard probably not available for a healthy uh, healthy citizen like me and you or some okay. guy down the street for to get a COVID vaccine okay. so um, and so people say that uh, <laughs> that they don't know what's inside and like they don't want to be guinea pigs it's like you have all these people in, like me and you mm-hmm. we have all these people in front of us we're getting the like, vaccine and getting the the shots taken. And it's like, right now, there's there's no problem. Uh, there's no serious uh, side effects or anything like that. In extreme cases, there's always extreme cases. But for the most part, it's like people are worried about taking it right now. Mm-hmm. When they don't realize that hundreds of thousands of people, maybe even millions, have already been tested on this vaccine and have been tried on this taxi uh, vaccine and it's like okay what i'm saying is like uh, i don't feel like a guinea pig because i already i feel like already people before me have already tried it and tested it mm-hmm. and it feels good you know it, not that doesn't feel good but just uh, feels true to to what they're saying and uh, i guess to your point like you said you have no problem getting it yeah. I wouldn't get it. Why not? Because I don't need to. Because I don't feel like I need to. Yeah, you don't and need to. To your point. Like, yeah. <clears throat> you know, if I'm a healthy person or whatever, I just... I I mean, we're getting political and we're getting into our opinions, but I just don't see the need to have one. And I know there's a lot of people out there that do. And, you know, there's... 
I mean, there's tons of vaccines. Mm-hmm. I don't, if I'm just being honest, I guess, on, sure. a, on the podcast, I don't get my flu shot. Yeah, like neither a lot, do I. Like a lot of people get their flu shot, and a lot of people swear by their flu shot. So, but I don't want to say this vaccine is wrong or right. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to get into that at all. If this vaccine is a an avenue for us to get back to where we were before 2020, fantastic. You're still not going to take it. I don't believe I need to. Because but the, but because you're not in a, one of those categories that is high risk. I mean, I, it's just a, my personal belief. It's not like you're near a bunch of people. Like, no, but I also... I don't, know, I don't know if I should say it. Sure. I just... I mean, if I get if I get it, I get it. That's my fault. The COVID? Yeah. Yeah. I will, I will wear my mask to every grocery store sure. out of respect for the people that want me to. And I'm a very respectful of the pandemic and everything that goes on. And I'm... I will do all of the safety measures to prevent the high risk people of getting it. Mm-hmm. But as far as a vaccine goes, I don't believe I need to have it. That's, no, that's, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. And that's I, just for me. I don't think and I need for to have somebody it to tell me that I need to have it to go somewhere else. I mean, that kind of bothers me a little bit because I mean, that's if that country wants me to still wear my mask and they still want me to do all of the other safety protocols, I'll do those. But I mean, it's just a vaccine. I can go anywhere in the world without having a flu shot. So, True. So it's it, it's. This, I'm I, not comparing the flu. I'm not comparing the flu. Okay. To COVID, I'm okay. just saying, you know, I can go anywhere in the world without the measles, mumps, and you know the MMR vaccine. You okay. can do any. There's, there's really not. I I don't know what vaccines or what. Shots you're talking about where you can't go somewhere without a vaccine. I've never heard that. So I'm not sure what, like, shots you'd have to take to go somewhere. I know that there's, like, the, um, I, I, I want to get in. I don't, I'm not sure what they are. But I know there's, like, certain, like, uh, like disease shots or, like, uh, immunizations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That you have to get to go somewhere crazy, but um, I don't know. It's just I I can't see having to have the COVID shot or vaccination to go somewhere. It's I'm the, not sure. So you've hit a lot of a lot of points that I want to kind of talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, a you said you don't know why you need the vaccination to go somewhere abroad, right? To sure. a different country. Uh, it's just, it's a virus, uh, from what's been, been told, whatever you, whatever you want to believe it or not, whatever. Yep. But there's, you know, a lot of, um, it's real. You should believe it. It's a real thing. Sure. Absolutely. Nothing about it is fake. But the, the difference between COVID and flu is COVID is a lot more contagious. It's a lot more contagious, and that has a lot more side effects than the flu. Okay. I, that's why I don't think it's comparable. And what's what's I think I would I'll, disagree with you, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, we do have a laptop. We can check the difference between the COVID. Well, that's that's just checking Google. No way! You don't believe in Google now. You don't believe. Well, in... I'm just saying. COVID is a virus. The flu is a virus. They both spread the same way. They both are spread. They both are... Um, they don't spread the same way. They do, though. They're viruses. They're, the, they're, well, you, they're you both say, viruses. You they, they, say, they're both immunodivirus or, or uh, uh, autoimmune viruses that are spread from our spit or, our, or the air. So how or, come... It's the same thing like if I had it on my hand and I touched the counter, you can get it. It's, it's the same thing, the flu. So I'm not. It's not the same as the flu. Okay, I'm just saying it spreads the same way. So that would be like saying a Lamborghini is a car and a Ford Focus is a car. They're mm-hmm. both they're both cars, yep. but they're significantly different as well. But I'm saying they spread the same way. The reason mm. that the flu is not so the reason the flu is not as um, 
you can't get the reason you don't get the flu as often as you get the uh, the coronavirus or COVID nineteen is mm-hmm. because our immune systems are so built up to fight against the flu. COVID nineteen is a brand new virus. That's actually a good point you bring up because you say it's new, but you know all these antibacterial wipes, Lysol wipes, and all that stuff. Before even this thing has been um, uh, at at a common level, mm-hmm. you you look at any Lysol wipes, any antibacterial wipes, mm-hmm. you'll see all these things that it fights against. <clears throat> yeah. And you'll always see the, the human coronavirus. So sure. coronavirus is not as new as we think it is. No. And people who are saying that it's man-made in China or something like that, eh, I don't know about that, bro. Well, I mean, it's called COVID-19. What's, where's COVID-18, 17, 16, COVID-19. 15, 14, 13 been? You know? I mean, if it's COVID-19, where's the previous 18? The, they've got to be a thing, right? It's got to be a thing, but then different strains and i feel like because we're not scientists we don't understand kind well of. here's my thing too and this may be just be weird but it is weird covid 19 <laughs> covid 19 is not the virus sars cov2 is the virus it's, it, it, covid 19 is the infection you get from the virus all of our bodies have viruses in them sometimes they choose to react and activate so COVID stands for coronavirus. I don't know what the D stands for. Nineteen stands for two thousand nineteen. Okay. So it's is that it has, what you're? That's what you're telling me. It has nothing to do with like infection or anything like that. It's just it's just another name. Okay. Well. So co corona virus D. I don't know. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we were talking about going to other countries and requiring vaccines. Yeah. Uh, there are, uh, I can guarantee you, like you'll go to, uh, for example, the U.S. travel government website and you can learn all about uh, precautions you need to take in other countries. It'll tell you, take precautions, you know, pit pocket scams or whatever. No, some will say, do not go. There's terrorist attacks, etc., etc. And, uh, they will say, like, you need to have these vaccines to enter the country. And it's not up to us. It's up to the people that we're entering. Like, there. is Malaysia and malaria one of them? That was the example I was thinking of. Malaysia and malaria. Malaysia. Is a country. In, and malaria is a disease that is. Yeah, happening. but malaria, I think, was more so in Africa than that was in Southeast okay. Asia. But do you need to go, but to go to that country that it was more. I don't know what the rules India, are. You have to have the malaria. I don't know if there's a malaria vaccine shot or but, whatever. Or... But a lot of these countries as well require travel insurance in case you do, uh, in case you do get infected or get some sort of illness, they require you to get uh, travel insurance. That way, they're not paying for your hospital bills, right? Okay. If that makes sense. Uh, but as well, on the other side, they don't really enforce it. Like when you, when countries require travel insurance, uh, the countries I've visited, visited, like, yeah, they'll say you need travel insurance, but they don't really check when you enter the the border, when you enter okay. the airport. So it's kind of like, technically it's required with the vaccines and stuff, but it's not really enforced. Okay. Uh, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. All right. So I guess I just wanted to say that. Um, COVID is real, regardless of how you feel or whatever about it. Mm-hmm. And I personally, I'm ready to get that vaccine just so I can live as normal as possible. You mm-hmm. know, uh, eat, go eat out of restaurants, go to whatever, yep. get drinks, and just leave the country. I'm just I'm regardless. I don't know if if it makes me a little bit stupid. Sure, whatever. I'm I'm ready to do that just so I can. Mm-hmm. And that's Go the travel. difference between you and me too. Is that you do you do a lot more travel than yeah. I do, and I mean I just can't travel as much because I got kids and yeah, all that that's going on in my life. But I'm ready for it to get back to normal too. Yeah, and if that's what it needs to happen with the vaccine and all that, I just 
I just hope and pray that we don't have to have it. It's not forced because I, I think that's against. Forced is different than voluntarily. Totally. Yeah. And, and we're talking about, you know, like to leave the country, that's your prerogative. That's yeah. your, that's if your, you want to leave and you, that's and, your choice. And the other country says you have to have it, then that's yeah. not a forced thing no, to have it. Not. So. They're not forcing you to go into their country with that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, and I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I think we can both agree we're just ready to be done with this whole topic. I think everyone is, yeah. Because it's frustrating. Yeah. For all sides, I think. I mean, of the discussion. people who don't believe it, whatever. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys are tired of trying to explain to, to us why it's, it's a fake or whatever. <laughs> And uh, how the government's trying to control us or whatever. Even if they are, man. Like, I like to say ignorance is bliss. Mm-hmm. It just it just hurts a lot less. It's a lot less frustrating not knowing the truth. Sure. Quote, yeah, unquote, we'll never right. really know the truth. It's, uh, just, it's, it's all opinion-based. Really. I mean, anything is. <laughs> if you want to get into it. Well, yeah. Anyways. Um, bro, have you heard of the... Uh, uh, the new Facebook policy with like WhatsApp and their other other uh, apps they own. Uh, as far as policy goes, no. Like the private, like so. Um, do you know what WhatsApp is? I know of the app. I don't know necessarily what it does so or it's what it's about. Basically, a Facebook Messenger. Okay. But for some reason, it's mainly used outside of the U.S. Okay. It's like used literally all over, not, well, pretty much literally all over the world except kind of North America. Okay. Um, we use what? I think most of us use texting, Snapchat. Yep. And maybe Facebook, Messenger, whatever. Sure. But they all use WhatsApp because it uh, doesn't count towards their data and stuff like that. They use Wi Fi and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but uh, Facebook released, uh, so Facebook owns WhatsApp, for example, mm-hmm. and they re, uh, they kind of came out with this new terms of service. Okay. And how everything you do it will be shared to their Facebook, uh, to their data center, yep. centers, mm-hmm. essentially. Mm-hmm. 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 And so there's been a big uproar, and it's like, they're tracking you, they're reading what you say, and it's kind of, I don't know, hip- hypocritical because they said that they wouldn't before they said that they wouldn't like track what you say and that the uh, direct messages and private messages would be kept um, secure Mm -hmm. but it would still kind of be uploaded to their servers and it's kind of like uh, mm, are you sure about that type of thing and so um, I was just curious if you heard about that because it's kind of a regardless of what like Regardless if you like Facebook or not, just having a a privacy boundary is is not it's not something big to ask for. And Facebook is such a large company; they they own Instagram, for example. And mm-hmm. if you read their terms of service, photos that you post on their on their um, on their platform, you lose rights to. Mm-hmm. They're their photos. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's like. The, all the locations you you attach to to your photos it's mm-hmm. none of it is yours anymore and it's, you lose out on a lot of privacy and it's uh, you know when you even most uh, social media platforms whatever whatsapp Facebook messenger Instagram all these DMs when you um, mm-hmm. when you allow so I don't know how it is on iPhone but on uh on Android, uh, each app requests permissions yeah. to certain whatever. Yep. Uh, contacts. Yep. You can have access to your, your microphone. It asks you to use your Yeah. If your, you want to use, if you want to talk with your voice, yeah. you have to ask access to your microphone. Yeah. You have to allow them access to your camera, to your. Yes. To your. This, and then. To that. That's great. If they were an honest company, I it wouldn't be a big problem. But the thing is, they're not an honest company. And so they're no. using your your tech. It's all legal. The thing is, it's all legal because you're giving them permission 
to so access the stuff. And that's they, what I was gonna say. They're using all the stuff in the background that you're not aware of. And I'm like, I'm sure most of you guys can relate because I know I can. I'll be talking about something. My phone's mm-hmm. off. Like it's not off, off, but it's like in sleep mode. You're just on the counter. It's, yeah, it's, it's on your side table. It's black screen. Whatever. It's not working. Yep. You, you, you know, you're talking with a friend about, yo, dude, I can't wait to go to Turkey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then... Or, man, dude, pizza sounds good, man. Pizza and then ne- sounds so good. Next thing you know, you're getting ads with pizza. You're yep. getting yep. ticket prices ads. Yep. And it's yep. like... Yep. It's... It's legal, but it's really garbage because there's no, there's no other... Here's the reason it's legal. Because you accept the terms and conditions. Of it the is. App. That's the only reason it's legal. But it's garbage because we as a society have normalized the all these apps and giving them permissions to do all this. Right, but we're the ones giving them permissions. No, I agree. That's why so it's if, garbage. If That's why it's shitty. If every person who had a Facebook deleted their Facebook tomorrow, Facebook would not be an app in yeah, for two sure. weeks. But it, can, that's impossible. It, you can't get everyone on the same. Oh, place. it's extremely impossible. But and and they know that. Yeah. And that's why they that's why they keep doing what they're yeah. doing. It's because they know that you're going to accept the terms and conditions without looking you, at the. You terms have no and other conditions. choice because all your friends, all your family are using this. Uh huh. And they, some people just don't care. It started out as an application with well-intended good heart reasons they wanted to connect people they wanted to me being a a guy in washington who has family in san diego and has family in florida and has family in north carolina to be able to connect with them and see how they're doing without having to buy a plane ticket without having to make a phone call without having to you know what i mean yeah and it started that way, I truly believe. It started that way. Well intended, good heart, you know, great idea. Until the money came in. And then they and then they got it and then they had to figure out how to make money. And then once they figured out the way they could make money was build a digital profile for each for user. All of us. And then sell that digital profile to advertising companies and allow this algorithm to build advertisement models around us and then feed us what we want to see that's how they make money they click on the link the the Facebook makes money and then the whatever the seller makes money yep there is a documentary on Netflix called The Social Dilemma I've watched it and I have not. It it's wild, to be honest with you. I watched it. Mind boggling. It's it's not mind boggling because all they're doing they're, they're in my Exposing opinion everything. in my opinion there's no like they're not feeding you something to sway your opinion. They're literally just stating facts. Mm-hmm. That's it. They're just saying. Here's the facts of what's actually going on. If you decide to continue going on, that's your prerogative. You can do whatever you want. If you decide to delete your Facebook, then great. Then that's the inf- you took the information, you heard it, and you made your decision. There's multiple decisions you can make. And it's uh, you know a bunch of former executives or former engineers or former data scientists and all this stuff from large companies, Pinterest. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of the social media outlets we use now. It's basically a bunch of people from those outlets that had worked at those companies when it was well intended and and had good hearts at what they were doing. And then they realized that maybe they crossed the line. And all these people have since left these companies. And now this documentary is about them basically just explaining what these apps do and they 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 basically tell you give you the backstory of 
you know, where they were at, and then they start to explain the algorithms. And that's where everything starts and ends, is with the algorithms. So basically, there's a computer program, computer program, not a human or, a, you know, anybody on the back end. Ironic. They built algorithms and computer programs to basically track how often or how frequently we visit a specific post. And that's as much, that's, as, that's down to the microsecond. So if you swipe past your friend's picture of him having a barbecue. Mm -hmm. and Next time they're not, they're not gonna show up. And you're only on it for 0.12 seconds. They're gonna go, he doesn't like that guy's profile. But then if you stop on a pizza ad for yeah. five seconds, they're gonna go, oh, he's more inclined for the pizza ad than he is this, or you, you get where I'm going. Yeah. It's gonna, it's, it's, it's tracking how often and how not often you are on every single post, every single thing that flashes through your screen. And that's, that's including Google and Firefox and all of the, the browsing mm -hmm. uh, companies. I would say there are certain companies that are good and they're trying hard to preserve privacy. For example, Firefox. I mean, maybe, but they still got to make money too. They're and not. So, they're not. They're a nonprofit organization. So what happens is, is they build a data profile on you. Who's they? Social media companies. That's the fun. Yes, the social media companies, but it's it's actually an algorithm. It's not a human being. It's a. It's not a person. It's an algorithm. Who's not a person? The the thing creating your profile. Oh yeah, no, they're not gonna hire some guy to be like, "Oh, this guy likes." Right. So it's an algorithm based off of the data that they receive on how f how much you like mm -hmm. this post or how long you've looked at this one or whatever, your microphone, how long you've talked about pizza or traveling abroad or whatever, and they put that into a data profile, and then what happens is the advertising companies the advertisement companies, they buy your profile. Mm -hmm. And then that's how the company makes money. They sell the profile of who you are to an advertisement company, and then the advertisement company puts advertisements onto your timeline, onto your IG account, mm -hmm. onto your Facebook, onto your YouTube, onto your this. Sure. And, and then that's how the advertisement, make, advertisement company makes money. Mm -hmm. It's because then if they have enough... Um, if they have enough content going the right way for you, then you click on it and you watch it and you buy it and you this and you that, then they that's how they make yeah. their money back. That's, that's a, a long description to say that social media companies suck. All of the social media companies, it's an absolute invasion of privacy. Sure. But we allot them. We allow it. So you can't really we allot about them it. the right to our privacy yeah. by accepting the terms and conditions. So because you, it says all of this in the terms and conditions. All you, if you'd read the fine print. All but, you guys who are using WhatsApp and are complaining about privacy and you continue to use it and you have... Sure, you can complain, but you can't... You kind of don't have the right to complain. If you're going to complain about privacy and stuff like that, read and understand the terms of what, you, what you're allowing these social media companies to do and then talk about how it's an invasion of privacy. It's the exact same thing, like I'll just give you the perfect example. On my YouTube, I recently got Call of Duty um, uh, Cold, Cold War. War. Good game. And I've been playing... It. Actually, shit a game, actually. It's actually a really good game. I've been really enjoyed it. The zombies mode is super good. It's probably one of the best mo zombie modes in I the love, last I love games. zombies. And so I got on my YouTube and I was watching a clip or a, a, like like a walkthrough or something about the zombies mm -hmm. uh, main Easter egg. The next day I get back on my YouTube. I'm on my homepage. You get a bunch there's of seven Call of Duty. There's seven, eight, nine different videos about Easter eggs and you know the best guns and the best strategies and the best this and the Call of Duty zombies because. 
I watched this video from start to finish, and, I think that's and the right. algorithm that's... said, now he's interested in this. We need to force feed him all of these things. Yeah. Uh, I so agree with you. It's a really, but really long explanation of me saying every, every click and scroll and push we do on our cell phones or our computers is 100% tracked and then 100% sold. Sure. Everything. Everybody, you block origin. There's, there's a bunch of, if you guys are using whatever Chrome, Firefox, even the new Microsoft Edge, you guys can all get um, privacy and tracker blockers on your web browser. Might not do a lot, but it'll do more than nothing. So I suggest you guys all research and get that uh, there's like facebook blockers all these trackers that yeah you can that add-ons that they block uh you block origin is one of my favorites i'd never see an ad on youtube for example um uh, but yeah evan's evan's pretty much right and uh, i guess i want to reiterate what i said earlier about if you use whatsapp and uh, if you complain about Imagine of privacy, but still continue to use it. Um, I think we do have the right. Actually, I I I am gonna make a one eighty here. Um, you should be able to use an app that you want, especially such as a social media app, without being invaded. Mm -hmm. Reg regardless if it's a social media app or not, you should have the. Uh, the ability and just kind of the, the peace of mind that you're, you're a human being and you should have some sort of privacy regardless of which app you use. And yeah, I mean, you could also make the argument that, you know, it's kind of like private companies versus public companies. Like if a private company can, you know, if you, if you go to a private company and they reject you, it's like, that they have the ability to do that. Sure, you can complain, but whatever, they have that right. Um, you can complain, but you shouldn't. You, you should just be aware, I guess. And uh, I, I, at this point, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It's just that... Like, if, if you really think that WhatsApp is bad, you would, you would, or any social media, you would move on from it choose an alternative if you don't then you're not really you don't really mind it that much me personally i don't mind it that much i hate it but i don't mind that much i still use instagram um, even though i don't post i still do a, you know scroll and browse and whatever but i actually have a counter to what you said regarding what you look at for micro in microseconds uh I don't think they would do that. Uh, I think it's based on clicks rather than what you view. You're gonna you, have to watch the documentary then, because they show you. They show you. They show you the algorithm. Let, to the let, let me explain it. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're on Facebook. You browse it. You need to use the bathroom, and you accidentally left your your page on pizza. Mm -hmm. You're gonna leave it on for five minutes, right? Doesn't mean you're interested in pizza. Yeah, but they have access to your camera. Sure. So they know your that camera not... only if they. No, I'm talking about like you're on a computer, with no webcam or whatever. Okay. You you you're, you're scrolling and you choose the bathroom and you just leave it at wherever it's at. It's not accurate. Why why would they waste resources on something that there's so much inaccuracy? Because it's a computer algorithm. So the al the algorithm can. Does the al I don't think the algorithm is taking account risks. And false positives. I think it is. I don't think it is. You need to watch. How, how would they know? You'll have to watch this because you're not. You're not answer the question. How how would the algorithm know whether it's a false positive or not? Because if you stay on an ad without clicking on it for twenty five seconds, uh -huh. then what you, what are you doing? Just looking at an ad for, for sure. twenty five seconds. Some people are interested. They want to read. No, because you'd click on the ad if you're. I interested think it's in it. based more. On clicks rather than whatever your page is on that, but it's not, and that's that's on, that's on time. If you watch the documentary, 
you would understand. I would still disagree with that. But this is from people who built the algorithm. Okay, that doesn't mean they know what... They, they, they're not taking account into false positives because there are more false positives than there are uh, just accurate... What's the opposite of false positive? Positives. Sure. <laughs> Regular positives. You so, have to watch it because this is from people who build the algorithm. A click is is a guarantee that there's. It's a positive guarantee. Yeah. But something you scroll and leave on. Yeah, but what if you scroll by something and you leave on it for nine Dude. seconds because you want to read the headline and you want to. You want to determine if it's something you want to click on or not. There, there are that prob- could be a false positive. We have three hundred thirty million people in this country. Yeah. I guarantee you, more than fifty, probably more than a hundred people have probably like dual monitors at home. When you're doing something on one screen, you leave it on, and then you go move to another screen, and you do work. That's why you build a profile. You every. Key yeah, but it, you it, make it cannot monitored. it cannot account for so many false positives. It can, and it, it does, does, and it is. Yeah. I'm just telling you. You're, you're saying as if it's a fact because you trust these guys, but that knowing the truth, right? I do trust them because all of, so you, you you're believing they, everything they say is a fact. I believe everything they say. Is so it's your opinion. It's their, not a fact. It, no, it's not a fact, but it's. Coming from the people who built the ag- algorithms, the people who built the computers to sure. make these things happen. There's a guy but on there. But they cannot account for every single v- variable. Well, you're talking about perfectionism. That's yeah. not. Pro- that's not. Nothing is perfect. I not sh- even an I algorithm agree. is perfect. Yeah, I agree. But every keystroke, every thumb swipe. It can be registered, mo- but it's, it's not monitored. accurate. It's monitored, is all I'm saying. It's monitored. So it does take into account that you stopped on that ad for 45 seconds. Well, what was the reason? It's monitored. That's all I'm saying. Oh, it's monitored. Sure, bro. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that they, that they know you were going pee. I'm just saying it's monitored. And yeah, I believe they do take, who, who they do take risks. What, who, who, false positive where, risks. Where is, this, where, where, is this, where is this algorithm built? Who's, who's building this algorithm? Every app has its own algorithm. Okay, so every app has their own way of monitoring Correct. and tracking and stuff. Okay. Correct. Some are better than the others. Yeah. Okay. But it all goes towards your digital profile. I think there are some companies that are good that don't, that don't, that don't do that. You don't think so? You think literally every company is out to... Not to sell you. I, I mean, I feel like to have a better conversation based off of like what you believe about it and what I do, you'd have to see the documentary because what makes that documentary fact? Nothing makes it fact. It makes it, all I'm saying is the people that are on the documentary mm-hmm. worked for these companies sure. and built the programs. Okay, I have, uh, I'm and they left that. based off of ethical concerns because they feel like the apps went too far. Mm-hmm. And now all they're doing is telling their stories. That's it. Sure. Okay. So it's a bunch of people who feel like these things are going too far. Mm-hmm. And they're just stating their concerns okay. to the people. I'm not saying that it's fact. I'm not saying that. It's a you. You can't go wrong by watching it. I'm just saying I watched it, and I believe it's so because what they say about even themselves, I go, wow, that's totally me too. Mm-hmm. Like one of the guys on it is the was the was the president of monetization for Pinterest, okay. which means they hired him to make say, money. how do we make money? Yeah. So he was part of the team that developed the algorithm that monitored people's keystrokes Mm -hmm. and built their digital profiles and sent them to advertisement companies. Mm -hmm. And he said he knew exactly what they were doing and he felt it was absolutely gross and wrong and terrible. But when he got home from work, do you know what he did? 
Why not Pinterest? He searched Pinterest all day long. And it like tore him apart because he like knew what the app was doing. But still, they create an addiction for us. They create that when we get, when, when this is in our hands, we feel secure. Mm-hmm. Rather than when it's not. Sure. And so their entire goal most of the apps, I'm not going to say all because I can't, but not most of the apps, their goal is to keep you in focus, to keep you engaged. Yeah. yeah. Because the more you're engaged, the better your digital profile and the more the advertisement company is willing to pay for that profile. Okay. So if they have, you know... A, a, super crazy based data on you Mm -hmm. I promise you advertisement company if you send Alex a a discount on a flight to Eastern Europe he's going to look at it because we've sent him 60 discount flights over the last one month and he's clicked on all of them I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> then they have that information on them. Sure. And it's all across. It's not just Facebook. It's not just Instagram. It's not just... It's... 90% of the keystrokes you put sure. on your phone, your computer, your laptop, your desktop, you sp- anything. That's actually interesting. It's all trackable. And it's all... There's all data to it. So when you talk about oh, the microseconds of this, it's it's all data. Sure. Okay. Whether it's relevant data or non-relevant data, it's all data that goes on your profile. Yeah, but then they have to so figure when you out talk what's about false, worthwhile data versus what's not. That's what I'm saying. So when you talk about false positives and you talk about you know non-false accurate. positives or this is accurate or this is not – there is a portion of risk involved in everything, but the algorithm determines mm-hmm. every piece of data. Sure. And it'd be like, like it'd be like me going to you know Best Buy that I have not been to Best Buy in five years, but I still went there, so it's a part of my profile. So whether or not I've, I, I, I haven't been there in years and I went there or I stepped away from my computer when it was on this picture or on this advertisement, it's still part of your profile. Regardless of if, it's, if you feel it's false positive or you feel it's accurate, it all is built into your data. I feel like this is more of a... So what uh, what's interesting is um, the European Union actually passed a data act, privacy data act, three, four, five years ago or something like that. And obviously it's not perfect, but it's just uh, interesting and actually refreshing to see how they actually care about privacy. There's, um, there's like laws where if Facebook wants to operate in the European Union, Instagram, whatever, any company, um, they have to explicitly um, tell the user that they're tracking them. And then the user can select different options. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I don't know why we're not doing this here. They have like laws against privacy and it's like mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not gonna go away. No. And I just like to say ignorance is bliss. Because it makes sense, like if you're like, you know, looking at this buddy's posts more often. Yeah. Because you wanna know what's going on. Oh, it's because life. freaking Facebook shoved it down my throat. How huh? <laughs> I'm like, I can't look at other <laughs> person's posts because Facebook has been showing me this. <laughs> Yeah, but is should Facebook just cancel their timeline feature and then you just go search what you want to see? No, what I want to see is 
I have a select amount of friends. I have a hundred friends. Yep. If ninety eight friends post something, I want to see this in the timeline, in the chronological timeline. I want to see what this friend was. I, I wouldn't I see friend saying. someone mm-hmm. who I'm not interested in being friends with. Sure. Facebook, for some reason, and this, I don't know, it was probably five years ago, four years ago, Facebook decided that they're going to show you the best results. Sure. I don't want that shit. I want to show me, show me from, re- from, from most recent to most old. That's what, that's what I want. That's what most people want. Mm-hmm. But they decided that uh, showing, uh, using an algorithm to show you what they think is best. Is, that's correct. And... It pisses everyone off. Yeah, they decide to do it. It's but yet we still keep our Facebook app, and we still get actually, on it, and we actually, still look I, at it. I actually don't. I, I stopped using Facebook. Uh, I delete. I haven't had the Facebook app on my phone since. I think Facebook is probably the the most the, the lesser used app. We're talking about Instagram now. We're talking about YouTube. Yeah, which We're talking is about... unfortunately all owned by the same two three companies. Yep, all the major. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <sighs> whatever you know like I said like I can't do anything about it at this point it's really kind of too late it's not like you can really hide yourself from from there and um, I'm just I'm just gonna live my life I'm gonna do my best I'm gonna we have today and then if we what? wake up tomorrow we'll have tomorrow what's what's awesome <laughs> I just I just want to say thank you to all the People who create programs and apps and blockers that um, just um, kind of give give all these major companies uh, just a headache. And like I mentioned, you sure. Origin it blocks ninety nine percent of ads. You go on YouTube, even if you don't have YouTube Red, it'll block ads. Like midway through the video, before the video, it'll block ads. There's like. <clears throat> program called Ghost Tracker. It blocks all these trackers. When you visit a website, it blocks all these trackers. There's a Facebook blocker, and I just want to say thank you to all these like program programmers and developers who are creating this to uh, just alleviate some of that mm-hmm. annoying privacy concerns. But well, yeah, bro, that's uh... that was a lot to talk about. All right, guys, so. That was just a little discussion, just hot topics of, of today's society. Uh, let us know how you guys feel about it. Uh, maybe controversial, maybe not. If you guys agree with us or not, it doesn't matter. Just you know, write how you guys feel. Uh, if you guys absolutely don't like this uh, concept and this type of content, also let us know, but in a nice way, please. Uh, Be nice. And be nice. Be and, nice. Be very nice. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, I think me and Evan you know, just enjoyed discussing it, and I feel like uh, gives a different perspective from you guys who live uh, not in America. This is what we do when we're not in front of a camera. To be for honest most, with you, for the most part, we yeah. just talk about stuff and our opinions and have conversation and the great thing about it too is we can be civil if we disagree on something. Shut the hell up. Okay, he's this, uh, <laughs> and that's kind of that's kind of the cool, neat thing too. Is like you know, if you disagree with something, or if you 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 got friends and you you disagree on a concept, or you disagree on a what on on a, a topic or whatever, like just have a discussion. Like that's and that's what we if do. If everyone too. And that's, thought- the, that's the fun thing about you know how we talk and our, our friendship is <laughs> you know you can do that so guys if everyone thought the same way life, life would be pretty boring if everyone thought the same way uh, felt the same way loved the same way worked the same way it, there's just that's not life man you you need different opinions you need different perspectives uh, to a certain point you don't want people thinking pedophilia or murder is okay but uh, uh, morality is here for a reason and you know the same thing with perspective and like languages it's different and that's amazing and so um, but also learn to have a discussion with somebody without having an argument or 
a fight. You Dis- know? Yeah, discussion versus a debate. I think that's, that's totally. A, that's a good because you might learn something. Like you know, Alex might say something that I'm like, oh wow, you, I just never like thought time. of it that way. Just or every time we talk, he's know, always like that. Whenever I say <laughs> something that's intelligent, you know, I Alex like needs to just listen and hear me Which out. Which is never so. So. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. You're the um, worst. I'm sure, bro. Whatever you say. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, just let us know in the comments if you guys want more, more topics, more stuff. Just you know, talk. Be happy. Live life. Have fun. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Yep. Uh, block Facebook. Yep. Honestly, guys, <laughs> uh, Facebook's pretty toxic. And uh, once I got rid of it, my life actually became more enjoyable. So that's my only advice for you for today. So any last words? Just nothing. I just That's just what I said. Have, I be bet. happy. Avoid, avoid Facebook. Be uh, good. Love uh, each Mark, other. Be kind. Mark Zuckerberg is a, a lizard person. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. See you guys. Later.